Hello, sports fans and football fans. As promised, today we're going to have a uh, box opening because look what came. Oh, actually, I should turn this around. <laughs> look what came from Stratomatic. Well, you don't really know what that is, actually, until I open the box. So that's what we're going to do right now. We are going to open... This package from Stratomatic, and as Kurt Berglund would say, this is a real, authentic opening. This is not fake. Nobody was harmed in the making of this video. And uh, we're going to see what we got in here. Now, if you watched my... Um, Look at the um, uh, the 2022 set as far as, you know, in the computer game, because the computer game obviously came first. You know what I'm going to be looking at here. So here we have the 2022 baseball or football, football season rosters for the uh, American Conference and the uh, National Football Conference. And guess what? We have the 1985 rosters for every team. That's right. I've got the 2022 cards. And so this is, this is it right here. This is 1985. There you can see the Atlanta is on the top. You got David Archer. Remember David Archer? <laughs> we all remember David Archer. <laughs> and then, of course, you have the uh, 2022 football set in their packaging. And so I will be opening these, and we will be looking at several of the players in the uh, 1985 set, that being this one right here. Uh, we'll look at some of the defenses, what they're rated, especially the Chicago defense. And uh, we'll look at some of the players that played a key role in 1985. Now, as I told you in the 2022 uh, look at the cards through the computer game, I will not be doing the 2022 card look on this video. I'm just going to be focusing on 1985. And so let's get into that. So let's get into this. We're going to look at the 85 players, the 1985, or select 1985 players. We're not going to look at every one. Uh, we're going to look at a few. We're going to sample a few defenses, four defenses that I picked out. Um, it's going to be a long process, so go get some milk and cookies and sit back and enjoy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some defenses. And the first defense we're going to look at is the New York Giants. And there is the New York Giants end run and flat pass defense. And um, let's see, their next one is their short pass and long pass defense. And they were rated good to excellent against passes. You can see the long gains there, but they're down at 11. Sacks right there at 7 and 8 on short pass. And um, against runs, they were also good to excellent. This is their line bucking off tackle card. So uh, there's the New York Giants. The next one we're going to look at is the San Francisco 49ers. And there is their flat pass and end run defense. There is their uh, defense against passes. They were only average against the pass, but they uh, the, the San Francisco uh, 49ers of 1985 were a good ball club. Um, and then against runs, they were excellent. And you can see this is their line bucking off tackle. The next one we're going to look at is the AFC champion, New England Patriots. 
Jets, and this is their run defense. And as you can see, they were rated excellent against the run. And then here you've got their flat pass and end run uh, look at their defense. And then they were also good to excellent against the pass. And there is their short pass and long pass defenses. Again, short pass, they have a sack at seven and eight. And so that was the New England defense. And now we're finally going to look at the best defense in 1985, and that is the Chicago Bears. And there is their flat pass and end run defenses. And uh, here they are against the run. They were supreme against the run. So there's their line bucking off tackle. Supreme, people. And then, of course, even against passes, they were excellent. And again, you see the short pass sacks at 7 and 8. I mean, that seems to be the M.O. If you were good against the pass, we're going to sack you at 7 and 8. So anyway, there's the defense. That's the uh, only defenses we're going to look at. Um, and now we're going to get into, we're going to go, I'm going to kind of work my way up here. There's only two tight ends I want to look at, and that is Doug Cosby of Dallas and uh, Ozzie Newsom of the uh, Cleveland Browns. So there's their cards. They caught 64 and 62 passes, respectively. Now, that probably doesn't hold a candle to today's tight ends, but remember, this is 1985. Now, if you've seen some of my... Um, uh, 1972 games, you know that it's very run heavy. 72, the 70s were very run heavy. Well, in 85, they were working their way out of that, but they weren't quite really all the way out of it yet. So now the big ones I know you want to see are uh, the first, we're going to go to the quarterbacks. And we have a lot of quarterbacks to do because, you know, there was a lot of good quarterbacks in 1985. Now, the first one, Danny White. This is Danny White of Dallas. And, of course, you know, if I didn't have a, a Dallas Cowboy, at least one, I would have, you know, been skewered. And so you can see there's his must run. He doesn't have an end run column. So that's Danny White. Next guy we got is an interesting dude, Dieter Brock of the Rams. I don't know what went on here, but as you can see, now he only completed 59.7% of his passes. And I mean, in, as far as today's totals go, that's really kind of uh, benign. But check it out on the flat pass. He doesn't have an incompletion except on the interception. But if the interception isn't an inter interception, it's still a completion. So, like, if you're right and he rolls a 10, that's interception plus 6, 2 to 4, 11, or 12, but 5 to 10 is a 6-yard completion. So, I mean, that's kind of crazy. And then that is Dieter Brock. And, uh, oh, yeah, let's look at the must run. I mean, it's he only had a 1.9-yard rushing average, so not really all that much to talk about there. Next guy we're going to look at is Joe Theismann. Now, really, there's nothing really all that special about Joe Theismann, except that he was Joe Theismann. And uh, he was a, a big quarterback of the 80s. And so I felt like, you know, we got to show him. So there's his passing card, and then we will take a look at his uh, running card. Let's see here. Let's see if I can get it separated. Now, he did have an end run column. He's got, the, of course, the line buck quarterbacks always have that, and the must run quarterbacks always have that. He had a 4.6 rushing average, though, and he did have 25 attempts, so there's his running card. The next one we have, of course, you've got to look at Joe Montana. I mean, I, if, I was not going to get out of here without looking at Joe Montana. 494 passes attempted, a 61.3% passing percentage. Now, this is where, I mean, you know, we're talking about, Ed, or uh, what was it, Walsh, Bill Walsh and the West Coast offense, and then this is where that all originated. 
with the uh, flat pass or the dump off pass being more like an extension of the run. And that's how a lot of teams do it nowadays. He passed for over 3,600 yards, 27 touchdowns, and not a very high interception percentage. So that's that. But now, you know, um, on his flat pass right, um, on interception, it's incomplete. Now, uh, wrong, it is still a completion if it's not intercepted. But, um, in fact, really, and his interception was so low that really, for all intents and purposes, wrong, flat pass is going to be a completion if it's on his card. But uh, you note that um, on his right, though, it's incomplete if the interception doesn't happen. So I thought that was an interesting thing with him. And now, and of course, we'll look at that. I forgot the, mess, the running. Now, he had a 3.6 rushing average, 153 yards on 42 attempts. So he does have an end run. And he does have a uh, pretty decent must run. So there you go. Another guy we had to look at is Dan Marino. And this is Dan Marino's card. He passed for over 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns. Now, the interception percentage is a little higher than Montana's, but it's still not really too bad. Um, but you'll note his interceptions on flat pass are incompletes, both. And in fact, he has an incomplete right at seven. So, um, you know, there is that uh, with him. But he's got the double long gain at 10 and another double long gain at 5. Um, so there's that. And then, of course, we flip it over. He didn't run a lot. He had a negative 0 0.9 average. And he ran 26 times for negative 24 yards. So, yeah, that must run is terrible. But you don't want, uh, you don't want Marino running anyway. Another guy, see, and this is what I'm saying. There were so many good quarterbacks. You have to look at Dan Fouts. Nobody's going to get out of here without looking at Dan Fouts. 27 touchdown passes, 430 passes, and a 59.1 completion percentage. Double long gain at 7. Um, let's see, he must have another one. Well, another one, that, the other one's at 12. That's kind of surprising. Um, but... And then he's got, you know, the uh, he's got the uh, automatic interception on right um, at four. But there, there's his card, and then his must run, of course, uh, much like um, Marino, he was a uh, not a good runner. He had a negative point one average. He rushed eleven times for negative one yard, and there's what the the uh, must run looks like when you got a running card like that. Now, we're going to do my favorite quarterback of all time, and that is Steve Grogan. Yeah, I know. It's Steve Grogan. He was not great in 1985. <laughs> in fact, he was primarily the backup to Tony Eason on the Patriots. But uh, he did pass for 1,300 yards and 156 attempts, and uh, that's what his card looks like. Now, he has some must-runs. So, obviously, you would say, yes, he would run. Although, you know, he was older in 1985. He only had a 1.5 average. But he did have 20 attempts for 29 yards, which resulted in a must-run column that looks like that. So, we got him out of the way. And now we're going to do Boomer Esiason. Only because it's Boomer Esiason. I mean, you know, he was, he was a big... He passed for over 3,000 yards and 27 touchdowns. And he had a 58... Um, percent completion percentage and he did uh, run a little bit so he had 33 attempts for 79 yards a 2.4 average which isn't great the must run is that you know eh. and uh, another one john elway you're not getting out of here without talking about john elway so here he is uh 3800 yards passing 54 completion percentage see that's the thing I'm showing him just because he is John Elway, the name recognition. But really, in 1985, he wasn't that great. Um, got the double long gain at 8 and then another double long gain at 2. Now, he does have a lot of long gains and a lot of big gains on long pass if you're wrong. He'll make you pay for that. 
but you know, not really overall an impressive card unless you intend to launch it every every down. And then finally, we're going to look at Jim McMahon only because he was on the world champion Bears. And I am a Bears fan, but I was really never a big McMahon fan. I mean, he, he wasn't that great. He was a he was a game manager, and the, his card looks it. Had some must runs. He had a 5.4 rushing average, 252 yards on 47 attempts. And so he does have a decent must run. He does have an end run. Um, not too bad if they're wrong. <laughs> And that's the quarterbacks. So now we're going to talk about the, um, let me put all these guys over here. Now we're going to talk about the running backs. And again, much like the uh, quarterbacks, there was a lot of these guys. So you really, a lot of these, you know, big named running backs. So we, we got to, you know, buckle in. Uh, Eric Dickerson's the first one we're going to look at. Again, kind of really name recognition. I mean, he, I don't know. He has a good card. 1,234 yards was good. Uh, 4.2 average, 12 touchdowns. That's a, that's a good card. Um, and uh, he had 20 receptions for 126 yards. Not going to really make his living that way, though. That's He's mainly a... Uh, you know, run the ball guy. Next one is Tony Dorsett. Now, Tony Dorsett, I'm going to say clearly he is in here because he's Tony Dorsett. Although he had 1,307 yards. I really can't poo-poo 1,307 uh, rushing yards. But you can see not a lot of short gains uh, around there. Uh, he does have the long gain on end run. But like off tackle, there's no short gains. And uh, except for if you're right. Um, and then he's got a double short gain at three on line buck. Um, and he did catch 46 passes. So he's even got a long pass receptions. Um, a double one, tw double 29 at 11. And that's Dorset. And then next we're going to have Rigo. Okay, so now Rigo is clearly, he's just here, John Riggins, because of the name recognition. He only had a 3.8 rushing average, and he only had 677 yards rushing. So uh, we got that, and he only caught six passes. So you're only going to throw flat to him, if at all. Next one is uh, the main man off of my Chicago Bears, and that is going to be Walter Payton, sweetness. And he rushed for 1,551 yards. This is what I'm saying. It wasn't McMahon. It was really Payton. It was hand the ball to Payton, hand the ball to Payton, hand the ball to Suey, and then maybe throw a pass if you got a third and a long coming up. But that's his, uh, there's his card. You, all Lots of speckled with short gains on wrong, on end run. And uh, 27 and 40, and yeah, he was good. And he did catch 49 passes, too, out of the backfield for a 9.9-yard .9 average. Got a double 28 at uh, 5 on long pass. And it's not even, not even his, his short pass isn't even that bad. But, yeah, that's... That's sweetness, Walter Payton. Of course, you can stop anytime you want on a lot of these guys. And here is his running mate, Matt Suey. 115 attempts, 471 yards. Not great. Um, I'm showing him mainly because he's on the Bears. <laughs> but you will notice, though, on the right, when you're right on a lot of these runs, he doesn't lose yards a lot. Like, line buck right. He's got a negative one, he's got the fumble zero, and then he's got the zero at seven. But otherwise, he's making yardage. So that's kind of impressive. And he did catch 33 passes. So again, you know, running back out of the backfield and uh, McMahon throwing a little, you know, little out pass to him. George Rogers. Now, I did not know George Rogers was on Washington at this point. I remembered him being drafted by the Saints, or maybe he was traded to the Saints. I don't know. Uh, 
Now leave it in the comments. But anyway, you know, George Rogers over a thousand yards rushing and a 4.7 yard average. I mean, you know, obviously he was still good. Um, after his years with the Saints, I don't know. Um, and he did catch only four passes, so we're not going to even bother with that. Next guy is Wendell Tyler of San Francisco. He had a 5.1 average, which is very impressive. 867 yards on 171 attempts. Now, you know, he didn't have the attempts and he didn't have the yards that a lot of these running backs have, but that's because he was on the same team with Joe Montana. So let's just put that in perspective. And then here's his uh, backfield mate, Roger Craig. And you got Roger Craig with a 4.9 yard average. Probably had these high averages for the running backs on San Francisco because nobody was expecting them to run the ball. They were always expecting Montana to pass it. Uh, still pretty impressive card. Uh, caught 92 passes for 1,016 yards. This guy, man, he's a double threat for sure. Next guy we're going to look at, we got to get the token Atlanta uh, Falcon guy in here, and that's going to be Gerald Riggs. Um, he, although he did, again, he did pass. For, <laughs> I make it sound like these guys didn't really do that well. <laughs> 1,700 yards, though, that's pretty good, and a 4.3 yard average. Um, again, not a guy that loses a lot of yards. Look at off tackle. Off tackle, you've got the negative one, and he doesn't fumble. So that's something that's pretty impressive. Uh, but you got the negative one at five, right? And then you got the zero at six. But otherwise, off tackle, he's getting he's getting yards. Same thing pretty much with line buck. You got a zero at five and a zero at seven. Everything else is a gain. So yeah, there's Gerald Riggs. And he also did catch 33 passes for 267 yards. Has even some long gains on long or. Uh, some uh, gains on long pass. So next one we're going to look at, we're going to the Patriots for this one. Craig James, the uh, former Washington Federal from the USFL. Um, 1,227 yards, 4.7 yard average. Got a long gain there on off tackle and on end run. Um, so yeah, I mean, Craig James, good guy, good, uh, good player, good young player. 27 uh, catches for 360, uh, 360 yards, and he does have a long gain on long pass wrong. So, you know, Grogan and Easton looking for him. Next guy you've got is Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack of Cleveland, five-yard average, over 1,000 yards rushing. You got some long gains in there on wrong. You got double short gains at nine across the board. And he caught 29 passes for 297 yards. So he has even some long gains or some uh, long pass receptions that are possible with him. Next, we've got the token St. Louis Cardinal guy, and that's going to be Stump Mitchell. 5.5 yard average, over 1,000 yards rushing on 183 attempts, you know, you can see he's got some long gains. Double uh, double short gains across the board at seven, which is pretty good. Seven, you roll seven a lot. So we're here at the 20 uh, minute mark of this video and still, or well, at, at this part of the video where I'm showing the cards. Ernest Biner is going to be the last running back we're going to look at. And um, the Cleveland... Uh, yeah, he was on Cleveland, had a four-point yard, one-yard average, 1,002 yards rushing, and he caught 45 passes for 460 yards. Has some long pass gains. Now, I realize that's the running backs. I realize I did not look at um, every uh, running back's pass reception, but, hey, you know, buy the set, and then you can do that. By the way... Uh, I want to point out before we get to our last category, which will be the receivers. Um, I don't remember if I got the original 1985 set. Um, I probably did, but I don't still have it in my possession. I don't know if it got thrown out somewhere along the way or whatever, lost in junk at my uh, parents' old house. But uh, I never did, uh, uh, but I don't have 
the so I don't know. Like if somebody out there has the original '85 set, it would be I'd be interested to hear from you on whether these cards look the same as they did in that that original set. Because I can see Strat address, adjusting their thinking like they have uh, been known to do over the years. They do it with the baseball set. You've got baseball guys like the 19, um, I don't know, 1975 set, the original, let's just say the 1975 set. And you could compare guys from the original 1975 set to the new 75 set. And it goes even differences on on many players go even beyond rating somebody as a five at a position where they didn't have that in 1975. You'll have that the card even looks different. The hits are in different places, etc. But with that, let's get on to the receivers. And um, you now, I kind of messed these up, so I don't have like I won't necessarily. There might be multiple guys from a team but maybe not together. So, um, but anyway, I mean, they are receiver, great receivers. And one of those is Mark Super Duper. Now, the good thing about this is we don't have another card to look at. We don't have to flip it over. It's just their receiving card. But he, he uh, had 35 receptions for 650 yards. Really not that impressive um, in comparison to what you would think Mark Duper would be with Marino passing to him. Although the card is good, I would say I like that card. So there's Mark Super Duper. Next guy you have that we're going to look at is Wes Chandler. Now, he was catching passes from Fouts. We looked at Fouts' card. We know Fouts' card was good. 17.9 yard average, over 1,000 yards receiving, almost 1,200. So there and a lot of long gains. That long pass uh, section is littered with long gains. And he, the guy that was on the other side of the line with him, and that is Charlie Joyner. Um, he only had a 15.8 yard average though, and caught for under a thousand yards. But you know what was. Uh, Fouts going to do. He had to spread the had to spread the wealth around. He had a lot of good receivers. Kellen Winslow, which we will not even we didn't even look at when we did the tight ends. Uh, but anyway, there's his card. Now, I apologize if there's a guy here that or there's a guy that I don't look at that you wanted to see the card. But you know, there's a lot of great players in this set. And uh, here we go, Irving Fryer. Irving Fryer, a 17.2 yard average, 870 yards. And there's his card. Catching passes from Eason and Grogan. And uh, his guy across the line from him was Stanley Morgan. And Stanley Morgan, one of the great receivers in New England history. And he had a 19.5 yard average, 760 yards receiving. Long gain, double long, uh, long gain on long pass at seven. So yeah, good card there. Chris Collinsworth, Chris Collinsworth, who was catching passes from Boomer and is now working for NBC as an analyst and uh, announcer sometimes. He was a good receiver though. He had uh, over 1,100 yards receiving in '85 for a 17.3 yard average. And again, you can stop the video anytime you want to get a better in-depth look at uh, some of these guys. Eddie Brown, who was also on Cincinnati. Now, I did him mainly, I mean, he had under 1,000 yards receiving, but he had 53 receptions for a 17.8-yard average and even has long gains on a uh, short pass and even on flat pass. Now, see, this is what I'm saying, long a double long gain here on flat pass. I don't think they did that in 1985. I think that's a new thing recently with Strat. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, if you do have the old 85 set. Again, this is Willie Galt, and we can see a double long gain for him on flat pass at 12. And again, I don't recall Strat. I think it's a new thing with Strat to give receivers long gains on flat pass. So... Uh, 
There you, and of course, Willie Galt was one, probably the best receiver for the 85 uh, Bears. He was certainly in that video. I know that. The Super Bowl shuffle. And now we got Tony Hill. Tony Hill of the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Again, you got to get your Dallas Cowboys in here because I know there's Dallas Cowboy fans probably watching this video. And they'd be like, you went through this entire thing and you didn't even show Dallas Cowboys. I don't want that happening. So there's Hill. He had over 1,100 yards receiving, a 15-yard average. Of course, you got to talk about Art Monk. Art Monk was one of the great receivers of the 80s. He had a 13.5-yard average, over 1,200 yards receiving and uh, there's his card, very good card there. And uh, of course, Jerry Rice. We're not going to get out of here without talking about Jerry Rice, are we? Had an over eight. He had an almost 19-yard receiving average, 927 yards receiving, double long gain at seven and long pass. And he has the double long gain. And he even has another long gain here at four and a double one down here at 12. Again, I think that's a fairly new thing. So I'm sure his original 85 card didn't look like that. Then you got Dwight Clark. And uh, Dwight Clark uh, uh, of San Francisco, 700 yards receiving, 15.1 yard average. There's his card. And we're down to the last guy, and that's going to be Mark Clayton. So you see, uh, you know, we did Duper earlier, and now it's Clayton's turn. And Clayton had, uh, what is that, 996 yards receiving for a 14.2-yard average. Uh, he, they didn't give him any long gains on flat pass, but anyway. So that is my look at the 1985 player cards. I went through as many as I thought I could do and get away with and not make the video, you know, five hours long. What did you guys think? What's the most impressive card that you think I went over? Uh, leave it in the comments. But that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.